Okay, here's a quick tutorial about how to get Eclipse uh, downloaded and installed with JavaFX set up on your home computer. So first things first, go to the website eclipse.org slash downloads, and you want to download the x86-64 version of Eclipse. And hit and download. Eclipse will bring me to a website that says, could you please donate? No, I'm not going to don donate today, Eclipse. Okay, the download for the install file is very quick. Once that's done, start the installer. And I downloaded something from the internet, or am I sure I want to do that? Yes, it's fine to do that. Now that the installer has started, I want to install Eclipse IDE for Java developers. And you may be okay with keeping the default location to make things easier to find for myself. I'm going to be putting it on my desktop. So I'm changing the installation folder to desktop. If you have a different location where you want to install that at home, that's fine. This part can take a hot minute. I'm just going to skip forward in the video to after Eclipse finishes installing. Okay, and Eclipse has finished up, so I'm going to click on Launch to launch Eclipse for the first time on this computer. The one thing I do like to do is change where uh, Eclipse's workspace is to make sure that I'm going to be able to find the folder very easily. Uh, again, for me, since I'm working on one of the school computers, the easiest place for me is on the desktop. At home, you may have a different location that you like to use. And I'm going to call my folder Workspace. I find it works best if you name your folder something that doesn't have spaces in the name. And right here, there's a checkbox that says use this as the default location and don't ask again. I like to check that off. It just makes starting Eclipse a little bit quicker. Launching for the first time, the Eclipse ID um, gives me like a welcome screen. I don't need that. I just close it. And now I need to go ahead and find and download the JavaFX files. You can find those on the course site. If you go to the course D2L page and ICS for you, look in content, look in JavaFX setup and JavaFX file download. Download that file. Once that's downloaded, I'm just going to open that zip file uh, in order to expand the files that are contained inside it. And I'm copying that folder straight into the workspace folder uh, that I made just a minute ago for Eclipse. So if I open my workspace folder, there's the JavaFX folder inside of it with all the files required for Mac OS and Windows. All right. I'm going to minimize that because I'll come back to it again in a minute. I need to set up JavaFX now. So the, what I need to do is make sure I'm working with Eclipse. Go to Eclipse Settings. Open Eclipse Settings. Look in Java. Find installed JREs. There should be one installed Java runtime environment. That's JRE. And I want to edit this one to add the references for JavaFX. So there's three things that I need to do here. First, add a series of external jars. I've got to look in my workspace folder, which happened to come up as default. Go to JavaFX. I'm working on a Mac computer, so Mac OS. Library files, and there is a bunch of jar files here. So I will select all of them and open. This should add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jar files to the list of external libraries. I'm going to select those eight that were just added and say I want to do a source attachment. It's in an external location. I'll look for the external file. That's one folder back from where the library is. So if I just go back to the Mac OS folder, there's src.zip. That's all the source files for JavaFX. If you want to know how any of it works, there's all the code right there. All right. 
link those source files, and then things will get nicely named for us as we make JavaFX files. The last thing I'm going to do is I need to add a default VM argument to actually um, link to and execute all of these Java source libraries that we've just added into Eclipse. So the VM argument, again, is located on the um, course website. So I just pop that back open. If you look at VM arguments, and since I'm working on a Mac, I need the Mac OS VM argument. I'm going to copy that and paste it to the default VM arguments. Uh, but I need to make a change. Here where it says the path to the libraries is path to JavaFX libraries, I need to actually type my path. And I can see it right there with all my other libraries. Mine is users 28818 desktop, workspace, JavaFX, Mac OS, lib. I just need to go as far as the lib. So slash users to 8818 desktop. Yours probably says things that are a little bit different. Just type whatever your path name says. Mac OS lib. And stop at lib, don't add in an extra slash or the name of any particular library. Right. Make sure that you have add modules, JavaFX controls, JavaFX FXML, and JavaFX.media as the three modules at least that we are loading. We hit finish, we hit apply and close. And to test that really quick, I'm going to create myself a Java project. Uh, I'll just call it test FX. Remember, no info.java file. Add a class to this project. Uh, I'm going to name my class test FX. So I'll put my package name as Valmy sure just could have it. Browse, and I want this to be a type of application, a Java FX application. You don't have to type the full word application, just start typing it until the list narrows down and you find the Java FX version of application. I want to have a public static void main and finish. When that class comes up, you know you install, installed the source files correctly or the reference to the source files. If it says stage, primary stage. If it comes up saying stage arg0, you've got to check your source library uh, connection. In here, I want to do primary stage dot show to get the window on screen. And for the main method, I want to do launch. Everything worked correctly. When I run this, I have a blank JavaFX window that I can now start building my applications in.